Hello, April. Yes, it's me, Beth. I'd just gotten out of the shower when the phone rang. I wanted to beat the answering machine, but I didn't have time. What's wrong, April? You sounded so desperate on my answering machine. I just got back from the store and thought I'd call you back. What happened? I did something stupid, very stupid, and when I tell Dave, I know he'll want to divorce me. What happened, April? Today I slept with Brad. God, I feel so bad. He asked me to dinner when we danced at homecoming last night, and for some unknown reason I said yes. Then we went to his room and had sex. When I tell Dave, I know he'll want a divorce. I don't know what to do, she cried. God, April, don't tell Dave. He doesn't need to know you made a big mistake. Didn't Brad come back to New York today? Yeah, but I hate myself. Brad went home after our affair. I love my husband. I really do. It just happened that, you know, Brad was my first love, and I was reminiscing about the old days, and I really screwed up, and now I'm going to lose Dave. Listen, April, you made a mistake, a big mistake. It's over now. Brad lives in New York. He's married, too, so he won't talk about it either. Forget it. Be the best wife and mother you can. Don't deprive David of anything and make love to him constantly. You will have to live with the fact that you cheated on your husband. Don't lose him and your marriage because of a big mistake. You're right, Beth. It really wasn't that good. David is a much better lover than Brad. I think I'll take your advice. I'll just have to live with it. It was a phone conversation I had on tape ten years ago. We had and still have answering machines that ring four times and give you a message. If you answer while the other person is still on the line, they will record the conversation. That's what happened to April. She went out into the store, and when I walked in and turned on the message, this is what I heard. I was completely stunned. I had no idea what to do. My beautiful wife and mother of my three-year-old daughter cheated on me with her old boyfriend. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I had to make a decision right then and there, so I took the film and inserted a new one into the machine. I put the film in a bag and hid it in the basement. I was going to keep this as evidence if it was needed. Let me tell you a little about our life. April and I, as well as Brad and Beth, attended the same high school. Brad and April were known as the couple to everyone, until Brad was caught by April kissing and groping Mary Lou. When she saw them, she screamed at Brad and told him she never wanted to see him again. Of course, he tried to persuade her to return to him, and she always refused. That's about when April and I started dating. I think she did it at first to get back at Brad, but she ended up falling in love with me. Of course, I always liked her throughout high school. I just never stood a chance with Brad around. In his yearbook, Brad was named Most Likely to Succeed. He was a football star and also played baseball. April received the title of Miss Charm and the most beautiful girl in the class. I also had a mark. MacGyver, Mr. Fix-It-All. I was called MacGyver because of the TV program where Mac could fix or fix anything. I was something like that, but certainly not as good as a real MacGyver. Some friends even called me McDave. April and Brad were prom queen and king, but she didn't spend much time with him. In fact, she was my date, and he took Mary Lou. I have to take a minute to tell you about Mary Lou. She was beautiful and had big breasts. Every guy I knew, including me, felt Mary Lou's breasts. Here's a surprise. After finishing school, Mary Lou went to a convent. I swear to God, she's a nun now and goes by the name Sister Mary Lou. After graduation, Brad went to study at university in New York. After graduating from college, he wanted to stay in New York and become a lawyer in the Big Apple. April went to a local college and studied secretarial skills. I went to study to become a mechanic, a car repair specialist. All our dreams came true. After college, April and I fell in love. We did everything together. After our wedding, she became pregnant. We were very happy. We had a girl, whom we named Carly. Of course she was our little treasure. I opened my own auto repair shop. I literally had more work than I could handle in a reasonable amount of time, so I hired two guys to work for me. People in those days wanted their cars repaired quickly, and we pride ourselves on our full service. I even opened up half a day on weekends to get work done, if needed. Life was good. Everything was wonderful. My parents were really proud of me. April's parents thought I was good and caring, but wanted April to wait to see if Brad would come back. 
You can't please everyone, that's my principle. I tried my best to be a good husband and father. Our fifth anniversary of our homecoming was approaching. I didn't care about the meeting, although I didn't mind seeing how some of the girls I dated were doing. I saw many of them when they brought their cars in for repairs. We had a beautiful class of girls. Of course, April retained her beauty and charm. She really wanted to go to the meeting, so we went. April looked great, but she always looked good. I think she dressed a little sexier for her old classmates, including Brad. When I told her how good she looked, she said she had a most beautiful title to uphold. She also said that she got dressed for me. Of course, I said, yes, that's right. We got to the meeting, and of course Brad came running to greet us. What he really wanted was to see April. He might not care about me. I shook his hand and asked where his wife was. He said she would not be able to come and would be in charge of their office until he returned on Sunday evening. She was his secretary before they got married. She told him that she was going to remain his secretary. Something told me she wore trousers in the family. I talked to everyone in the class. I danced with several girls from our class. Every time I danced with someone, I noticed that April was dancing with Brad. I was a little angry. I told her about it, and she started dancing with other classmates. We ended the reunion by dancing the last few dances together. Some of the class said they wanted to meet for lunch the next day before those attending had to go home. I told them I couldn't come because I needed to fix some cars in the morning. April said she would try to come if she could get her mom to watch the baby. I wanted to argue, but that would make me look really bad, and April had never done anything to make me distrust her. I got up early and headed to the store while April was still sleeping. I had to work a little later than usual. When I returned home, it was around 5 Ashu p.m. There was a note from April on the table saying she was going to take our daughter. I saw the answering machine blinking and listened to it. When April got home, she said her mom was going to leave Carly for the night so we could be alone. She took me to the bedroom and made passionate love to me. I asked her what led to this and she said she wanted to show me how much she loved and cared for me. I guess this was the beginning of the sorry style sex I was to receive. I don't know if I did the right thing or not by not telling her that I knew about this incident. I believed she was truly sorry and the way she made love to me was fantastic. We must have made love that night, more times than any time since we got married. It didn't stop that night. The next morning, she took care of my morning mood. I had to call the store and let the guys know that I would be a little late. Life was better than usual, and it was always good. I really felt like she was trying to compensate me for something she didn't even know I knew. She ended up getting pregnant. Life was good. We had another little girl. We named her Danny after me. My name is David Daniel Moore. Over the years, Danny became my little sweetheart. Carly always hung out with her mom in the kitchen or wherever she went. Danny always wanted to go to the garage with me. I took her with me as many times as I could. I didn't want it to be around the exhaust fumes in the garage too much. I had a small apartment above the garage that was used for relaxation or even napping during the day. There was also a kitchen and bathroom. This way, I could take a shower without coming home dirty and looking like a car mechanic. I took Danny there to play games whenever I could. She wanted to spend time with her dad, and I wanted to spend time with her too. We took the girls everywhere. They liked amusement parks. We took them there so they could ride all day. Of course, Danny wanted to go on rides with me, and Carly wanted to go on rides with her mom. Damn how I loved my family. I almost wished I had never found out about the cheating. Life would be perfect. It's time for our 10th anniversary reunion. I really didn't want to go. I was afraid of what I would do to Brad if he showed up. My life has been good for the past five years. I didn't want it to get ruined. I asked April if she wanted to go, and she told me she wasn't interested in attending. I was so happy. Just in case, some friends called to convince April otherwise. I bought us tickets to Kings Island, an amusement park. I booked us a motel room for two nights to make sure we weren't available to visit. This was a great relief for me. April was still trying. I could see it. We had a great time in the park. My girls loved it, and April couldn't have been more loving and gentle. Once the girls fell asleep at the motel, she was ready for sex. We made quiet love that night. 
Watching April try to stay quiet was wonderful. Damn, I was a happy man. Both girls were now attending school, and April took a part-time job as an assistant in the school office. This way, when there were no classes, she could be with the girls. My business was also growing. I hired two more employees. Life was good. The school conducted DNA tests on all students. This way, if problems ever arise, parents won't have to look for donors. The worst-case scenario that no one wanted to talk about was that if the child went missing, he could be identified. We got Carly and Danny tested. We needed to collect the results from the doctor in three weeks. April was working at school that day and asked me to stop by the doctor and pick up the results. I didn't have any problems with this. After I entered the office, the doctor gave me his results. He told me that he was surprised that the girls looked so much alike, even though they were only half-sisters. My mind went blank. The doctor asked me if I was okay, and I asked what he meant by stepsisters. He said, Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. I did not know. I didn't know what, Doc? Are you saying they had two different fathers? My God, I couldn't believe this was happening to me. I'm so sorry, David. I shouldn't have said anything. The tests show that one parent is different in each test. Doc, can you give me a test? I need to know for sure. I'm pretty sure, but I need the test results. The doctor reluctantly took my blood. He said he would hurry up and try to get my results in a week. He apologized to me again and said he was very sorry. I looked him straight in the eyes and said, Doc, I am not the biological father of one of my girls. I will tell you right now that they are both still my daughters and I will love them equally. Dave, my lips are sealed. I went home with the results. April looked at them, but they meant nothing to her. Just a bunch of dots on a graph unless you really know how to read them. After she looked at them, I was pretty sure she didn't know that one of our daughters wasn't biologically mine. A week later, I returned and received the results. I was right. My little pride and joy, Danny, was not my biological daughter. I knew it must have been her affair with Brad. God, I hated what she did to me. I hope no one ever finds out. I wasn't even going to tell April. I was depressed for the next couple of weeks. April asked me what was wrong, and I told her I didn't feel well. She told me that maybe I should see a doctor. I told her I took some medication and it should help. Actually, I just drank almost a pint of whiskey and went to bed. The next morning I woke up and saw little Danny lying on my arm. I don't care who her father was, she was my little girl. Time passed and I returned to normal. Life around me hadn't really changed, and little Danny was still my little sweetheart. April was still as loving and sweet as ever. One day Beth called and spoke to April. After talking on the phone, April said Beth and her husband Mark were separating. They divorced after ten years of marriage. She said it was because of irreconcilable differences. She said Beth didn't say anything else. Life went on. April and her secret and me and my two secrets. It's time for the reunion from 15 years ago. Carly was 13 at the time and Danny was approaching 10. April said that Beth wanted her to go to the homecoming because she was on the committee with Beth that year. It would be hard not to go if you planned it. I really didn't want to go but I'm sure as hell not letting April go alone. We headed to the meeting. My classmates looked older. We haven't seen many of them in ten years since we missed the last one. Brad, of course, showed up again without his wife. He held out his hand for me to shake and I told him, Brad, I'm tired of pretending. I don't like you and never have. I'm not going to shake your hand and I don't expect you to spend the entire meeting with my wife. April looked at me and said, David, how could you speak so poorly to Brad? God, I feel embarrassed. She looked at Brad and started apologizing for me, so I just waved my hand in disgust and walked away. Later she came up to me and started arguing with me. How could you do this, David? Brad didn't do anything to deserve this. He always treated you with respect. I almost broke away and told the truth about everything, but in the end I said, all he wants is to hang around with you all night, and we both know it. If you want it so bad, damn it. Here it is. Go get it. April ran to the ladies' room in tears. Beth overheard part of the conversation and ran after her. Perhaps I've said too much. I think I've had enough. I walked up to the bar and started drinking. 
April returned soon after and said she was going to visit some classmates. I watched her and she stayed away from Brad. I think she danced with him once all night. I was almost sitting at the bar alone. Every now and then someone would come and I would talk to them. When the meeting ended, April had to help me walk to the car. She told me how much I embarrassed her and then became silent. When we returned home, I immediately went to bed. The alarm went off and I felt terrible. It was Sunday, but I promised several people that I would fix their cars. I got up and went to work. While I was working, I felt bad about the way I acted at the reunion. Of course, I hated Brad and was angry at April, but no one knew why. I called a couple of guys to work. It would have cost me extra money since it was Sunday, but I was going to go home and invite my family over for dinner. When I arrived home, the house was empty. It was 13 or... The answering machine was blinking as I rewound it. Again, April apparently didn't respond in time for me to hear the message. Hello? April said. Hey, girl, what are you doing? It was Beth. Hey, Beth, just got out of the shower when I heard the bell ring. What happened? Lunch. Would you like to join a group of classmates for lunch? Who else is coming, Beth? Besides you and me, about half the class, can you? Will Brad be there, Beth? David will kill me if I go to lunch with Brad. Come on, April. It's just lunch with old classmates, not a sex session with some old guy. Besides, you barely talked to Brad last night. It's just lunch. After David embarrassed me last night, he'll deserve it. What time and where, Beth? At the Holiday Inn at noon. Okay, but I need to get home before David finishes work. He should be home by five or earlier. Here it is. She was going to do it again. I went down to the basement and took out a package from ten years ago. I vacuum sealed it to prevent air from getting inside. Then he began to collect his things. I was planning to move and stay in the apartment above the garage. Most of my personal belongings were already in my truck, and two suitcases sat by the door, waiting for April. At four o'clock she walked through the door. She wore a tight mini dress with a plunging neckline. Jewelry and all, she looked like she was on the runway. David, what are you doing at home? I thought you worked until five. I felt bad about the way I treated you yesterday, and I thought I could make up for it by inviting you to dinner. Looks like you've already eaten. David, I need to tell you something. Before you say anything, I want you to listen to something. I played a recorded message. Oh, God, David, we didn't do anything. We just had lunch. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. You have to believe me. She cried. Let me tell you something, April, and then we'll see if you can say the same. I have never had sex or had any sexual contact with another person since we got married. You can say the same. April? David, honestly, we were just eating. There were about 30 people from the class. Ask anyone. Brad wanted something more, but I didn't let him. I told him no, and if he tried again, I... I would have told you, then I hit him, David. You have to believe me, David. Absolutely nothing happened, honestly. Then let me hear you say what I said, or will you lie? Okay, David. Honestly, I haven't had sex with anyone since we got married. Now will you let me explain what happened so we can get over it and make peace? Not yet. I have one more entry for you. I took out the film. God, David, no. It was a mistake. I didn't want this to happen. I love you. Only you. She listened to her conversation with Beth ten years ago. She was crying and didn't know what to say. Something else you should know. I'm not Danny's biological father, your lover, Brad. But as far as I'm concerned, she's my child, and I won't let that ugly guy take her away from me. I placed Danny and my DNA documents on the table, and also a paper with the inscription, No Matches Found. April screamed, No, this can't be true. This can't be true. Please, David, please don't leave me. I love you, David. I love only you. As I walked out the door with the last two suitcases, I heard her crying. Where should I start? I'll try to explain what happened without telling you everything again. I will have to repeat some parts so that you understand both sides of the story. Like David said, we all went to the same high school. Brad was my boyfriend at the time. We probably spent the best part of two years together. We only had sex once, and that was during our senior year. It was after one of the school dances. Brad came to my house and no one was home. We had the usual sex that most young people do. 
and I decided to give him my virginity. He had no grace at all. This sucks. I mean, if that was the point of sex, I wouldn't need it. After smoking and telling me how great he was, Brad went home. I couldn't be more disappointed. You hear all these stories and watch the movies and then you do this. Over the next few weeks, Brad wanted to do it again. I kept pushing him away. I had no intention of being just his fuck toy. That's when I caught him and Mary Lou behind the gym bleachers. He groped her, and when I saw him, I called him a big ass and told him I didn't want anything to do with him anymore. He apologized to me over and over again. It didn't work. I stopped seeing him. That's when David and I started dating. I always liked him, but I didn't do anything about it because I was in an ongoing relationship with Brad. Dave always thought I was dating him to make Brad jealous. There is some truth to this, but I was also a high school student and fell in love like most girls. I was so happy when David asked me out. Just so you know, some people call him Dave, others David. I use both names. It's kind of funny when you think about it. Dave thought all the girls were in love with Brad because he was a jock. In fact, most of the girls had crushes on Dave. He was smart, handsome, fit as any athlete, and could fix anything. We called him McDave after TV's McGeever. We started dating, and about six months later, while we were both in college, we had sex. Let me change the wording. We made love. He was so good. After Brad's episode, I didn't expect much, but David was so sweet and gentle. We were in his apartment. He laid me on his bed and kissed me tenderly. No quick, quick, thank you, goodbye, with him. We made love many times after that. He always used condoms after the first time. We were happy that I didn't get pregnant the first time. After we both graduated, we got married. He was a wonderful lover. My parents loved him, but the idea of Brad becoming a lawyer appealed to them. I just told them I don't love Brad, I love David, and that's all. After that, I got pregnant, and we had Carly. She was so sweet. Everyone, including David, said she looked like me. I think kids are like whatever you want them to be. One day she looked like me, the next day she looked like David. All I knew was that she was one beautiful girl. We were so happy. Life was good. Then came that terrible day. We went to our five-year high school reunion. We were having a good time. I think I started showing off too much. I remember dancing with Brad several times. I wanted him to see what he lost because of Mary Lou, who ended up becoming a nun. The next day, several classmates gathered for lunch before heading home. David couldn't come because he had several cars that he promised to fix. I went alone and made the biggest mistake of my life. After lunch, I went to Brad's room and he started hitting on me. I knew I was saying no because I was married, but for some unfathomable reason, I gave in and let him have sex with me. I think it might have something to do with comparing him to David. I don't know, it was just a stupid, very stupid mistake. When we, or should I say he, finished, I felt nothing but humiliation. I knew how wrong it was at that moment. We both got dressed and I had to leave from there. I drove home crying. I had to wash away the dirt I felt. I can tell you right now that there is no way to get rid of scams. Once you do it, it stays there forever. I called my friend Beth. I had to tell someone how I felt. Beth was my best friend and I know she would always keep it a secret if I asked her to. She wasn't there, so I left her a message to call me. I was in the shower trying to wash away my sin when the phone rang. I heard the answering machine answer the call and got to the phone before Beth hung up. I told her what I had done and how it would end my marriage and I would lose the person I love. That's when Beth told me not to tell him. This will only hurt him and end a good marriage. I told her she was right. I did a very stupid thing, and I will have to live with it. I could make it up to David by loving him and our daughter. That's what I decided to do. I forgot about that stupid answering machine, and as you know, David took out the tape and saved it. When David returned home, I took him into the bedroom and made love to him over and over again. I truly loved him and decided that I could live with the pain of what I had done as long as I had David. About nine months later, our second child was born. We named her after David. His middle name is Daniel, so we named our sweet baby Danny after him. Again, everyone said she looked like me and Carly, and some said she looked like David. Personally, I thought she looked a lot like her sister Carly, 
and as she grew older, she liked Carly more and more. You could say they are sisters. Life went on, and we had a wonderful life. We did everything together with the children. Little Danny always wanted to go with her daddy, so David took every opportunity for her. You can hardly separate these two concepts. When it came time for our ten-year reunion, I told David I wasn't interested in going. I didn't know if Brad would be coming from New York, and I certainly didn't want to see him. David didn't care. He didn't really like alumni reunions anyway. He made special plans for the four of us to go to Kings Island, an amusement park. We spent two nights in a motel and took the kids on rides all day until they were tired and made love when we got back to the room. David was a wonderful father and husband. DNA testing was carried out at the school. Each child could be tested, and the results would be sent to the family's doctor, where they could be collected. I asked David to stop by the doctor and pick up Carly and Danny's results. He brought them home and showed them to me. It was just a bunch of dots and dashes. It meant nothing to me, and David put them in our safe in case we ever needed them. Looking back now, I remember David was a little annoyed. I thought he was sick, and in fact he rested and drank heavily for three days. He even slept on the couch, saying he didn't want me to catch anything he might have. Looking back now, it was strange that I didn't notice the difference in David. Every morning, he had Danny on his arm. She had a tendency to wake up in the middle of the night and always lie down next to her dad. She really loved him. Life seemed to continue quite normally. The kids did different things at school, and we both attended all the activities for both of them. I remember when Danny was about nine, and it was career day at school. She asked David to tell the class about being a car mechanic. David laughed but said he would do it for her. After his speech, Danny told the class how proud she was of her dad, and when she grew up, she wanted to be a car mechanic like him. David said he couldn't be more proud of her. Beth was in charge of her 15-year high school reunion and asked me to help her organize it. David was not happy about this and made it clear to me. I had to go. I was part of the committee. Besides, it had been ten years since I had seen Brad, and I had absolutely no feelings for him. I dressed nice for the meeting, but I always wanted to look good. I wanted David to be proud of his wife. I was nice to people, but I tried not to flirt. I knew David hated it. When we walked in, Brad was there and immediately approached us. I couldn't believe what David told him. He said, Brad, I'm tired of pretending. I don't like you and never have. I'm not going to shake your hand, and I don't expect you to spend the entire meeting with my wife. I looked at David and said, David, how can you talk so badly about Brad? God, I'm ashamed. I looked at Brad and began to apologize. David simply waved his hand in disappointment and walked away. I approached David Latcher and started arguing with him. How could you do this, David? Brad didn't do anything to deserve this. He always treated you with respect. I was just trying to smooth things over. David must have thought I was still in love with Brad, which was absolutely not true. David got drunk and we left the meeting early and I drove him home. The next morning he left for work before I got up. The girls spent the night at my mom's. I took a shower and the phone rang. I was almost ready and jumped out of the shower to answer the call. The stupid answering machine went off and I had to wait until it finished. It was Beth. She wanted to know if I was going to lunch with my classmates. She said about half the class would be there. I decided to go and talk to some of my classmates that I didn't get a chance to talk to because my husband got drunk and I had to take him home. I thought Brad would be there, but I'd try to stay away from him. When I arrived at the Holiday Inn, we had a reserved room for lunch because many of my classmates who were there for the reunion were staying there. I saw Brad and tried to stay as far away as possible. I said hi to him when he came over, but I tried to stay away from him. He almost gave me chills. I needed to go to the toilet, which was around the corner. When I came out of the restroom, Brad was standing there and wouldn't let me pass. He grabbed my hands and tried to kiss me. He said that if I didn't cooperate, he would tell David about our dinner after our five-year meeting. I gave him a hard blow to the head and then raised my knee and hit him square in the groin. As I ran back to my seat, I ran past Beth and Sister Mary Lou. I know they saw everything. I tried to act calm, 
but I was still shaking a little. I sat among my friends and felt much better. Brad never returned to the table. He must have gone up to his room and then gone home. I really do not know. Beth walked up to the table and quietly asked if I was okay. I told her everything was fine and that I was going to tell David about what Brad did today. I didn't plan to talk about the meeting after the fifth anniversary, only about what happened today. I had our van and Beth asked if I would mind driving about five of my classmates to the airport. There were three girls and two guys. One of the couples was married. It was a pleasant trip to the airport. We dropped off our classmates and then I dropped Beth off at home and headed home. When I entered the house, David was standing there. He said he came home early and was going to invite me to dinner to make amends for how he acted at the meeting the night before. I told him that I needed to tell him something. I was about to tell him what Brad did when he turned on the recording on the stupid answering machine. I told him I didn't do anything, but he didn't believe me. He didn't give me a chance to explain when he said he had another message for me. I don't know where it came from, but he replayed my conversation with Beth about that stupid mistake the day after our fifth meeting. I listened to myself saying that I had sex with Brad. I couldn't stand it and started crying. I had no idea he even knew. Before playing the tape, he asked me if I had ever had sex with anyone since we got married. I told him, no, not knowing he had the tape. Then he told me the worst news of my life. Our baby, our Danny, was not his biological daughter. He took the DNA printout and placed it next to Danny's printout along with the paper that said, no match. I wanted to die. I never knew. He walked out the door, and I sat there and cried. I cried for myself and I cried for David. He was the perfect husband and father and kept it all to himself for ten years, and finding out a few years after she was born that he was not Danny's father was heartbreaking. He was her father and no one could take that away. He was there for her from day one when he was there for the birth and was there when he took the girls to my mom's yesterday. I wanted to die. I wanted God to come down right now and just take me away. Either way, I'll probably go to hell for my past actions. I lost the man I loved, and now I have to take his children and tell them that their father abandoned me. God help me. I should have known years ago that it would eventually come to this. I kept her affair to myself for ten years, and the information about Danny's father for at least four. Maybe I should have done something ten years ago and ended it then. The last ten years have been the best and worst of my life. We're both keeping the same secret. It's crazy. Since I knew her anyway and stayed with her, why don't I just come out and tell her what I know? My head was spinning, and I had questions for her and questions for myself, but there were no answers. Danny, my little Danny, Daddy's girl, I wanted to make sure she never found out. She is my daughter, and I needed to protect her. I had to make sure April never told her. I didn't want anyone to know otherwise. I believe April never knew. She was shocked when I told her about Danny's DNA and mine. On Monday after school, I got a call at the garage. It was Danny. Dad, when are you coming home? I miss you. Mom continues to cry, and Carly just sits in her room. Please come home, Daddy. God. Talk about tugging at heartstrings. Honey, Daddy can't come home now. Mom and I have some problems. But I'll tell you what. I'll pick you and Carly up, and we can go out for pizza or something. Can Mom come? Not this time, sweetie. Maybe next time. Go ask Carly if she wants to go. Dad, Carly wants to go, but she says she needs to take care of her mom. She doesn't stop crying. Can you and I go to McDonald's and I can give something back to Carly and mom? Damn. What wonderful children. They always worry about everyone. Yes, honey, we can do this. It's up to you to decide what they want. I'll be there in about 20 minutes to pick you up. Okay, Daddy. I love you. I heard a voice in the background. Dad, Mom said to tell me, we all love you. See you in a while. Bye. Damn it. I just don't know what else to say. Damn, damn, damn. I hate her and I love her. Why can't I even think straight? I went and talked to the guys about closing the garage when they were done. Really good guys worked with me. They knew their car business and I paid them well for it. I had their respect and they had mine. I told them that April and I had some issues going on in case I suddenly disappeared for no reason. I apologize in advance. Danny jumped into the truck and kissed me hard on the cheek. 
She kissed me two more times. She said one was from Carly and one was from her mom. With tears in my eyes, I went to McDonald's. I told Danny I was staying in the garage and he and Carly could call me at any time. Even if I was not at home, I was still available to them at any time. I told her to tell my mom that I needed to tell her something and I would call her tomorrow after school. The next day when I called, Carly answered the phone and said her mom was in the bathroom and would be right out. Then she asked, Dad, what happened so bad that you left? Did Mom, me or Danny do something? I know I'm only 12, Dad, but I'm pretty smart. I know you wouldn't leave without a reason. What happened, Dad? What have we done? Honey, you and Danny didn't do anything wrong. I'm very proud of you, too. What did Mom, Dad do? I know she loves you. Dad, she cries every night. I'm a little afraid that she might do something stupid. If she did something wrong, she would do everything to make it right. That's the kind of person she is. Give her a chance, Dad. I don't know what she did that was so bad that you left. She won't tell us anything. Honey, this is between your mom and me. There's nothing you can do. Your mom and I have some serious differences that we need to talk about. I'm glad you're there for her. Dad, Danny and I are here for you too. We are a family, Dad. A good family. You should know this. I love you, Dad. I cried and tried not to show it. God, I loved my girls. April answered the phone. Hello, David. April, we need to talk. I'm worried about Danny. I never want her to know that I'm not her biological father. You're her father. You've always been there for her. That's what real fathers do. Dave, I never knew. Honestly, I never knew. I guess in some ways it's good that I didn't know. I can't talk about this on the phone, David. I need to see you to tell you what happened. April, how do you expect me to believe anything you tell me? You've been lying to me for at least 10 years. As far as I know, everything you've ever told me has been a lie. I don't know what to believe anymore. Dave, please meet me and let me tell you everything I know. If you want to call it a lie, so be it. But give me a chance to tell you. If not for our sake, then for Carly and Danny's sake. That's it. What I ask is that you give me the opportunity to tell you before you decide to completely destroy our marriage, our family. She was crying. I heard it through the phone. Okay, April, I'll listen to what you have to say. I don't know if anything is worth believing, but I'll give you a chance to say it. Thank you, David. That's all I ask. I promise I'll answer any questions you have. Even if you don't believe me, at least I'll know I was honest with you. I continued to go about my business at work throughout the week. I talked to the girls every day and they told me what was going on at school. Carly said, Mom seems a little better since she talked to me. My little girl thanked me for talking to her mom. I wasn't looking forward to talking to April. I wouldn't know if I should even believe her, and I'd have to figure out for myself why I didn't do anything ten years ago. The best reason I could come up with was that she was truly remorseful. At least that's what she sounded like on the record, and she was going to do everything she could to atone for it. I have to say that she really kept her promise until the last lunch meeting. I really needed to know why she went and what she was doing there, whether she wanted to see Brad or not. Damn, I needed answers, so I wanted to hear what she had to say. I arrived home around noon on Saturday. My two girls ran out to meet me. Daddy's here? Daddy's here? Danny cried. She jumped into my arms and of course I had to catch her. No problem. I would never let my baby fall to the ground and she trusted me not to let that happen. Carly ran out and kissed me on the cheek. Carly said mommy was cooking dinner. I asked what they would be eating and she smiled and said that since I came, mom wanted to make sure we ate well because I probably didn't eat well. BBQ steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, corn on the cob, and she said mom even baked homemade bread, and she helped out. I helped too, Danny said. Yeah, you kept eating it while it was hot, Carly replied. My two daughters always argue, but they actually love each other very much. Okay, girls, let's go inside. I walked in, and April was standing in the kitchen, dressed like the perfect hostess. She was wearing a small apron and the table was set. Welcome home, David. She pulled out everything for lunch and put the leftovers in containers for me to take with me. This was all just for me, wasn't it, April? 
I wanted her to know that I saw it. Of course, anyone could see it, but I needed to start the conversation somehow. On my part, of course, but not on theirs. They were just glad their dad was going to be here. Since dinner is ready, will you eat with us? April asked. I didn't answer, but sat down in my seat. I was about to grab some food when Danny said, Dad, we need to pray. She then continued, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, and God, thank you for bringing Daddy home to eat with us. Amen. Damn, it's not fair. It's just not fair. I came here to talk, and here I am eating a fantastic lunch, and I knew that the children were sincere. I knew April arranged it, but not the kids. They were just glad Dad was here for lunch. Damn, this woman knows how to prepare everything. After lunch, I told the girls that I would take them to Grandma's and Mom would pick them up later. Dad, will you be here when we get back? No, honey, not right now. I just came to talk to my mom and then I'll go back to the garage. The girls looked upset. I thanked them for helping Mom prepare a wonderful dinner and asked if they wanted to go to the zoo the following Saturday. They both shouted, Yes, we want to go. Can Mom come with us? Damn, I forgot about what they might ask. I told them we'll see and I'll talk to them during the week. The entire time, April just sat there, not saying a word. She then spoke and told me that she would clean up the mess while I took the kids to her mother. When I returned, she had already put everything away and packed the leftovers into containers for me to take with me. Well, we better get started. I'll let you tell me whatever you want. I can intervene with questions that I need answers to. Does it suit you? Anyway, David, I just want to tell you everything and let the cards fall where they may. How many times have you had sex with Brad? Oh my God, David. You don't have to be so harsh. I told you that I will answer all your questions. Again, how many times have you had sex with Brad? Twice. Once when he and I were together, and that stupid, stupid time after the fifth reunion. Are you telling me that you've only had sex with him twice in your entire life? It's true, David. It was so bad the first time that I had no idea how good it could be until I made love to you. I'd like to add that you and Brad are the only two men I've ever had sex with for my entire life. Now I wish I had never had sex with Brad, not even the first time. Damn, this confused me a little. I had sex with many girls from our class. It's good that I don't have to tell her about them. Why did you do this to him the second time, April? I don't know, David. Don't expect me to cry much now. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe to compare you to him, maybe because it was so bad, the first time I might have thought it was my fault. I don't know, David. I really don't know. God, how I wish I didn't have to do this. I wish I could go back to that day and not do this. I may wish it never happened, but it happened, David. It happened, and I'll have to live with it for the rest of my life. Her eyes were watering. Why didn't you tell me? You would leave me, David. I know you would. I don't know why you didn't do it when you found out. David, after this happened, I came home and spent an hour in the shower, trying to wash myself of what had happened. I hated what I did to you, but all I could think about was that if I had told you, you would have left me and Carly. I decided to live with the pain and be the best wife I could. I really wanted to tell you, God, it was so hard for me to hide this from you, but I knew it would hurt you if you found out and we'd have to get a divorce. I loved you too much to lose you, David. I still love you too much to lose you. She started crying again. What about Danny? When did you find out that I wasn't her father? Two weeks ago when you told me about it, I was devastated. I didn't know what to think. Since that session with Brad, we've made love to you three times. I wanted you so much. I wanted to do everything for you. That's why I was so happy when I got pregnant. You and I having a baby together felt so right. Then you showed me the DNA. I didn't know what to think. If I had known I was pregnant with Brad's child, I would have had an abortion. I really would. I want your children, not anyone else's. I keep wondering, ever since you told me that, if I had known she was Brad's daughter and I would have had an abortion, then there wouldn't have been a Danny. I'm very upset about this. David, as I said... Danny is your daughter and no one else's. She will live her whole life knowing this. I won't let her get hurt. You are her father, her only father. 
I thought she screamed, but apparently not. Let's move on to dinner, where you were going to cheat on me again. God, no, David, that's not true. This is, without a doubt, not true. I was only going to have lunch there with half the class. April, I took the tape with me. Let's listen to it together. I played the tape again. Hi, April said. Hey, girl, what are you doing? It was Beth. Hey, Beth, just got out of the shower when I heard the phone ring. What happened? Dinner? Would you like to come to lunch with a group of classmates? Who's still coming, Beth? Besides you and me, about half the class. Can you come? Is Brad arriving, Beth? David will kill me if I go to lunch with Brad. For God's sake, April, this is lunch with old classmates, not a sex session with one old guy. Besides, you barely even talked to Brad last night, and it was only after dinner. After David embarrassed me last night, he'll get what he deserves. What time and where, Beth? Holiday Inn at noon. Okay, but I need to get home before David gets off work. He should be home by five or earlier. Well, here it is. You said, after David embarrassed me last night, he would have deserved it. What did you mean, April? Would I benefit from having lunch with friends or having lunch with Brad? Did you have sex with him or did you plan on it? No. No, David, you got the point completely wrong. I meant that if I had lunch with Brad, you would be angry. I can't deny that. The rest were just statements people make. Being with Brad, never. In fact, he scared me. I tried to stay as far away from him as possible. Ask Beth. Ask anyone. I tried to stay away from him, David. You see, April, I can't believe you. Maybe you're telling the truth. Maybe you're lying. I can't believe Beth. She's your best friend. She would lie for you if you asked her to. You say you tried to stay away from him. Are you saying that you couldn't? God, David, that's what I was trying to tell you. I went to the ladies' room, and when I came out, Brad was standing there. He wouldn't let me pass him, grabbed my hands and said, Kiss me, or I'll tell your husband about the five-year reunion dinner. So you kissed him? Are you going to tell me that? No, never, David. I punched him in the face and then kneed him in the balls as hard as I could. He fell to the ground and I ran back to lunch. Beth and Mary Lou walked up to the corner. I'm not sure what they saw. Ask Beth. She'll tell you. April, again, can I trust Beth, your best friend? Why did you come home so late? Your lunch probably didn't last even four hours. When I got back to the table, I was breathing heavily and Beth asked if I was okay. She asked if I wanted to take one of my classmates to the airport and she would go with me. Was Brad one of the people you took to the airport? No. After I need him, he never came back for lunch. Besides, I think he went to his homecoming. According to Margaret, one of his classmates, he likes to show off his car. What kind of car does he have, April? I have no idea, David. I never saw it and never wanted it. When you came back, you were dressed to kill. Why? David, I always dress nicely, especially for you. You know it. But I wasn't there. Were you dressing for someone else? For example, for Brad? No, David. I know you won't believe it, but I'm dressing for you. I always dress for you. When someone sees me, I want them to know that I am your woman. I know this is hard for you. Understand because you are a man. But it's true. I didn't answer. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I asked her if there was anything else she wanted to tell me before I left. Well, David, ten years ago I made an almost tragic mistake. I say almost because Danny came out of it, and I wouldn't want to lose her for the sake of the world, both mine and your memory. I love you with all my heart and soul. I will always be, no matter what happens now. I was stupid ten years ago, but I haven't done anything wrong since then, including lunch. For some reason you thought about forgiving me ten years ago. I don't know why, but nothing has changed since then. If you could forgive me then, why can't you love me now? I fell in love with you even more, and I know you love Carly and Danny. I love you, David, and I want you to come home to our family. She started crying again. I told her that I needed to think and talk to her again. I told her to kiss the girls for me, walk to my truck and return to my apartment above the garage. I went home and kept listening to the tapes over and over again. I had no proof whether she was telling the truth or not. I just didn't know. A couple of days later, Beth showed up and said she wanted to talk to me. I went to the office to listen to her. She started by telling me that she found out about the affair after the fifth meeting. 
She talked to April and April said, I know about this. She told me that it was her suggestion to April not to tell me about it. It happened and it was over. There's nothing to gain by telling me. She told me that the only reason April kept it from me was because she didn't want to hurt me and she was afraid that I would divorce her. I explained to Beth that I almost understood what had happened after the fifth reunion. I was interested to know what happened at the 15th dinner. Before she started, I told her that I should take everything she said with a grain of salt because she was a very close friend of April. Well, I called April and asked her about lunch since she was on the committee. She asked me if Brad would be there. I told her he was there, and she thought about not coming. I made some stupid comment about no sex and how it was just lunch. She said something about how you deserve it. I think that was her way of saying that she was mad at you last night. I truly believe she didn't mean anything by it. Beth, where was she sitting and was she talking to Brad? I need the truth, Beth. Lying for her sake won't help any of us. She sat as far away from Brad as possible. One day Brad approached her and she said, Hi. But that was it. He returned to his seat. Later he ran into her. I don't know what was said, but I can say what I saw. April came out of the restroom and I saw Brad grab her arm and she pushed back and hit him with a good punch to the face. She then raised her knee and kicked him in the groin. He fell and she returned to her place. Then what happened, Beth? April was a little shaken, so I calmed her down and we decided to take a few people to the airport. It was a good trip and it seemed to calm April down. Dave, it's none of my business, but I can understand where you hurt me all these years. But so did April. She's my best friend. You're right. The reason I'm here now is because she loves you and you love her. You have two wonderful children. Don't throw it all away now. She did nothing but eat lunch. Trust me. She didn't mean to cheat on you. Thanks for stopping by, Beth. You're a good friend to April. Beth walked away, and I repeated what she said. That's pretty much what April said. I turned around and saw that Beth had returned. David, I forgot to tell you something very important. Maybe this will help you trust me. What is it, Beth? The reason Brad never came back to the table was because he was taken to the hospital. He appeared to fall and part of his face hit the floor, turning it black and blue, according to the hospital report. Beverly didn't come to lunch. She's a nurse at the hospital and called me the other day. Would you believe I forgot to tell April? Will you tell her? I only found out about this yesterday. Thank you, Beth. That was good news no matter what I decided to do. I'll tell you about April. Wow, there might be some truth to this. If only there was someone I could trust other than our friends. The next day, Mary, or should I say Sister Mary Lou, came to change the oil in her convent car. While my boys were changing the oil, Sister Mary said, You want to talk to me, don't you? Actually, yes. Did you go to lunch a couple of weeks ago? David, stop beating around the bush. I may be a nun, but I've known you all my life. I know you quite well, and I have to say that you were one of the very few guys I ever respected. In my wild days, you still treated me well. You have always been polite and well-mannered. I respect you for that, and someday I'll put in a good word for you. She smiled. Yes, David, I was at the dinner, and yes, I saw Brad try to attack April. At the bathroom door, I saw Brad grab April. I was going to try to stop it, but April didn't need any help. She pulled away and punched Brad in the face and then kneed him in his, um, personal space, so to speak. He fell, and April left. I called a waiter who was nearby, and they helped Brad. That's all I saw. I don't know what this is about, but you and April are two special people and deserve to be together. David, Take the word of a wise nun and friend. If you and April are having problems in your marriage, you only need to ask yourself one question. Would my life be better without this person? This is the only question you have to ask yourself. We cannot allow things like pride and unforgiveness for the mistakes of others to take over our lives. Just ask yourself, would I be a happier person without April in my life and act accordingly? I hope I helped you at least in some way. God bless you in April, Dave. I thanked Sister Mary as she got into the car and drove away. I knew she was an opinion I could trust. She never knew what it was, and I was sure she didn't mean to lie to April.
Tomorrow I'll have to call April and talk to her again. Before I could make the call, the phone rang. It was Danny. Hi, Daddy. I was supposed to call you and ask if Mommy could come with us to the zoo, remember? Yes, honey, I remember, and yes, Mommy can come with us. I heard her yell at Carly to tell April that she should go to the zoo, too. What a family. Danny, is Mommy here? I need to talk to her. She shouted into the phone. Mom, Dad wants to talk to you. Here she is, Daddy. See you on Saturday. Hi, David. This is a pleasant surprise. I'll go to the zoo with you. I could tell she was smiling. You could almost feel it through the phone. That's not why I was going to call, but you can go to the zoo. I was going to call you to let you know that Beth called me and told me that the reason Brad didn't return to his desk was because he was seriously injured. Restaurant staff took him to the emergency room. Unfortunately, he will survive. David, those were two tricks you taught me when we first started dating. I have to thank you for teaching me. April, after we get back from the zoo on Saturday, we need to talk again. You do not mind? I will do anything to bring you back to me, David. All. We all want you here with us, David. Well, we'll talk again on Saturday. Don't go cook dinner. We will eat out after seeing the animals. See you on Saturday. Thank you, David. I love you. And she hung up. We had a good time on Saturday. I slipped a couple of times and took April's hand. Of course, she didn't say anything. We had fun feeding the animals and spending time together. It's only been three weeks, but it feels like a lot longer. The kids couldn't be happier. After we left the zoo, I told the girls that they could choose a place where we could eat. I was waiting for McDonald's or Chuck E. Cheese as the girls shouted Red Lobster together. I looked at April, knowing it was one of her favorite foods, and asked her if she had bribed the kids. She said, I told you I would never lie to you. Yes, I bribed them. How? How did you bribe them? She looked at me and said, I promised them that I would try to convince their dad to spend the night at home tonight. I didn't answer. I asked everyone what they wanted to eat. After eating, we headed into the house. It was already late and we sent the children to bed. Then April and I went into the living room and sat down to talk. What's the matter, David? What's the problem? What can I do to make things better? April, I believe you told me the truth about the dinner. Sister Mary Lou came to me and told me that she saw how Brad grabbed you and how you took revenge. She had no reason to lie. My problem is that I didn't do anything ten years ago. I feel like I should have told you or yelled at you, maybe even divorced you, but I didn't do anything. I accepted your betrayal and did nothing. It's hard for me to deal with this. I don't understand, David. Do you want to take revenge on me? Do you want to start an affair? David, no one knows except you, me, Beth, and Brad. I never told anyone. I was too ashamed. David, do you want to get back at me by having an affair? I wish it were that simple. I love you, April. I really do. Always loved. I don't want an affair. You are all I need. You see, Sister Mary Lou came in and said to me, she saw you fighting off Brad. Then she told me how to solve my problem. What did she say, David? She said to ask yourself one question. Would I be a happier person without April in my life? And act accordingly. What's your answer, David? She waited again with tears in her eyes. I want you, Carly and Danny. In my life every day. Oh God, David, I love you so much. And I let her kiss me. I still have a problem, April. If I don't get my revenge on you, I'll have to take it out on Brad. David, Brad lives in New York. What can you do? Wait until the next reunion. Then we went to the bedroom and made love. I stood up and put my pajama pants back on. April looked at me and said, What are you doing, David? I think Danny is coming here tonight and I want to get dressed. April looked at me and said, Welcome home, David. I really love you. I wouldn't have a life if you weren't a part of it. She went to bed and so did I. I woke up Sunday morning and saw Danny lying on my arm. Looks like I'll have to start locking my bedroom door, but that can wait another year. I liked my girl with me. We're all back on track. Life has truly gotten better. April and I promised each other that there would be no more secrets. If one of us had a problem, we would talk about it. Neither of us had these secrets anymore, and it really made things easier for us. Time flew by, and it was time for the 20-year reunion. Beth was on the committee again, but April told her we were both coming, but she wasn't going to be on the committee. I called Beth, 
who was still April's best friend, and asked if Brad had sent back his invitation. She said yes, and it was only for one person. A quick note, but not that important. Beth remarried to a really good realtor named Mike. We attended their wedding, and although Beth is a beautiful woman, my April was still the most beautiful woman there. I learned something about Brad, and of course, I told April about it. Brad was a lawyer, but not the best. He achieved success by marrying the daughter of the president of the company. She was his secretary, but she was the one who controlled the apron strings. That's why she never came to homecomings. She wasn't going to come from New York to our small town for Brad's reunion. Brad, on the other hand, thought he was still a big man on campus. We arrived early for the meeting. April looked fantastic. She said she got dressed for me, and this time I believed her. We acted like two newlyweds. All our friends were coming up to us, and then I saw Brad standing at the bar. He had started to go a little bald and had gained about 30 pounds in the last five years. He was telling one of his old friends about his new Mercedes with a leather interior. I walked towards him, and April got scared and came with me. His friend left when he saw that I didn't look too happy. I walked up to Brad and said, My wife said you wanted to tell me something at the last meeting. What exactly? Brad was nervous. I don't remember, sorry. Well, I have something to tell you, you fat bastard. You lay a finger on my wife, and I will deprive you dignity, and I'll shove it down your throat. I make myself clear. Yes, I can hear you. He quickly turned around and left. This time, April leaned over, kissed me, and said, I love you, David. The next day, I told her she needed to make a phone call. I bought a prepaid phone so the number couldn't be traced back to us. A prepaid phone is a small phone that you can buy with a certain number of minutes on it. We could get rid of him when we were done with our calls. I told April what I wanted her to say, and she shook her head and said, Honey, I never want you to be mad at me again. She called Brad's office. I assumed he probably wouldn't show up for work on his first day after the humiliation he had suffered. He wanted to take a day to get himself in order. Of course, I wanted his secretary wife to answer the phone. She called Brad's office and got through to the secretary. She asked to speak with Brad but was told he wasn't there, so April said she left a personal item in Brad's car and asked him to mail it. The secretary asked what it was, and April said it was quite personal. The secretary said it was okay, and she would keep it a secret. My panties. I left my panties in the back seat of his car. I wouldn't have called, but they were a gift from him from Victoria's Secret, and I wanted to keep them. The secretary felt furious through the phone, but wanted to get all the information she could. She asked, Who are you, and how do you know Brad? April replied, I'm an old friend of his from high school, and we saw each other at reunions. Please tell him I left them in his car. They match my set. He knows where I live. Oh, I'm sorry, please. Tell him I'm sorry to hear that his wife died. I will pass on all the information you can be sure. What is your name? Mary Lou. I promise you he remembers me. Thank you very much and please give him my best wishes. April then hung up. April looked at me and said, David, I didn't like doing this. I know he deserved it. I want you to know that I did this for you. I promised you that I would do whatever you asked. Please don't ask me to do such things again. April, I think you've proven your love for me. I promise I'll never ask you to do anything you don't like. I think our revenge is complete. The only thing is, if Danny ever needs a kidney, I'll have to go to New York and cut it out from Brad myself. My family comes first. Life went on. We never spoke about Brad again. We attended our 25-year high school reunion and Brad didn't show up. There were rumors that he got divorced and was kicked out of his company. He started over at a different firm with far fewer benefits. Carly became a teacher and is now married with her own family. Danny. Well, Danny is married to a race car driver. She manages our garage and has attracted a lot of business. She met a racer who said she was the best mechanic he had ever seen and definitely the prettiest. He has a lot of riders coming to her for repairs. They have two children. She always said that she wanted to follow her father. She told me that some racers call her McDanny. At our 30-year reunion, the committee invited April and I to the podium. They gave us an award for the happiest married couple in our class. They asked us about our secret after so many years, with so many divorces and separations in modern society. 
I looked at April and said, Many years ago, a very close friend told me the secret between marriage and divorce. She said, Just ask yourself, would you be happier without April in your life? And act accordingly. My answer is always that I am much happier with April in my life. I looked out into the crowd and saw Sister Mary Lou smiling and smiled back. Life is good. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.